And I'll just read you, uh, just to finish up, I'll read you uh, a quote from uh, Cornyn uh, at yesterday's press conference. He said, this is the first time that I know of in our nation's history that a Supreme Court nomination will revolve around the nominee's commitment to the Bill of Rights, and most particularly the Second Amendment to the Constitution. Um, specifically, um, at the moment, you know, all the, all the other parts of the Bill of Rights, with one tiny exception, um, have been read to apply to the states. Will the Second Amendment, because it's the conservative part of the Bill of Rights, um, will that apply to the state? Sotomayor has said that it doesn't. Um, you know, when it comes to a choice between people who want to use guns for self-defense, you know, crime victims, would-be crime victims, um, and, and those who uh, oppose guns, uh, we know where her empathy standard comes down. It comes down against, uh, against gun owners. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, she has said that the, the Second Amendment uh, does not protect the fundamental right. Yep, she said it's so not a fundamental gun, right. You owning a gun is not a fundamental right, according to Judge Sotomayor, both pre- and post- Supreme Court decision that suggested that it might be. Uh, Roger Clegg, you know, you may have to leave early because the decision that we've been talking about, or the pending decision, Ricky, may come down in 20 minutes. Uh, so uh, please uh, forgive him uh, pre presumptively if he has to leave because obviously his organization and given his expertise on the issue, he's going to be needed uh, to respond uh, on behalf of uh, his organization, the conservatives generally. But Roger, I uh, give it to you. Thanks very much, and um, I appreciate your uh, your being so accommodating to my schedule. And uh, actually, I'm going to ask um, uh, one of our our summer workers, uh, Andrew, if uh, when it gets to be 10 o'clock, if you could go uh, check uh, <laughs> in with uh, the office and ask them to let us know if the uh, if the New Haven decision comes down, and, and if so, give me a high sign, and I'll I'll scoot out of here. We got plenty of blackberries. No, I mean uh, right. the office at, at home. We, we're All right, yeah. Right. Okay. Um, I want to thank you, Tom, not only for being so accommodating to my schedule, but for the great work that you've that you've been doing uh, in the area of um, judicial confirmations, and of course that goes also for the fine work that uh, that Kurt's doing and and that, that Manning's doing. You you all are really uh, uh, an impressive triumvirate, and I. Uh, I, I thank you on behalf of uh, not only the Center for Equal Opportunity, but for, um, but on behalf of the American people for for all the uh, important work you're doing. And I'm I'm heartened uh, that this particular nomination is starting to um, develop the uh, the grassroots opposition that I think is going to be necessary in order to defeat it. And I uh, I, I think it's significant that last week. Uh, Senator Jeff Sessions, who's the ranking Republican on the Senate Judiciary Committee, said that he was looking forward to a, a teaching moment uh, during the, uh, the next few weeks on the role of uh, judges and also on the issue of affirmative action. And what I'm going to be talking about today uh, in large part is how those two issues come together. Uh, you know, it's it's very interesting. Uh, we we have something like uh, a perfect storm, I think, brewing. Uh, we we have a uh, a Supreme Court nominee uh, who apparently does not understand or appreciate the judicial role. Uh, it seems that her lack of understanding, in particular, involves issues of race and ethnicity and gender. Um, one of the decisions that are Exhibit A uh, in, in, in why we should be concerned happens to be before the Supreme Court right now. Uh, it would have been a page one decision no matter what, um, but now on top of everything else, it's a decision that I think is likely to be reversed uh, that was written by a judge who's been nominated to join the Supreme Court. Uh, that case involves affirmative action, involves uh, racial preferences, an issue that is uh, extremely controversial, and the use of racial and ethnic preferences is extremely unpopular among Americans. Well, we've talked about uh, the abortion issue, we've talked about the Second Amendment. I would add uh, racial preferences uh, to that uh, as uh, one of the top legal issues that Americans feel very strongly about. And 
uh, as um, uh, as uh, important as these other issues are to conservatives, the thing that's interesting about racial and ethnic preferences is, is I think that nobody uh, across the political spectrum likes uh, that kind of affirmative action. You know, this is not something that you know only Republicans oppose. I think that most Democrats are very unhappy with people being told that, well, you know, you're not going to get hired because you're the wrong skin color or you're not going to get admitted into the college you would like uh, because you're the wrong ethnicity uh, or you're not going to get a government contract because you're a man rather than a woman. So these are extremely uh, Im important uh, and uh, uh, emotional issues, uh, issues where I think a lot of empathy is, uh, is involved. Um, I also think that it's significant that uh, we have uh, an African-American president for the first time in our history. And that is, I think, uh, a an epical event that is causing a lot of Americans, even those who might have been willing to uh, accept uh, the use of affirmative action for a long time, to think that, well, you know, maybe the time has come where we ought to be moving beyond that. So we have all of these issues you know, coming together in what I think is going to be a very interesting way over the next, uh, over the next few weeks uh, during Judge Sotomayor's you know, confirmation hearings. Let me back up, though, for a second and, and um, talk about the, the first issue that Senator Sessions said he was looking forward to a teaching moment on, and that is the, the role of a federal judge. When somebody's nominated to be uh, a Supreme Court justice, there are you know, a number of qualifications that we, that we look for. Um, and Kurt has um, you know, touched on, on, uh, on a number of these. One of them is, is simply judicial temperament. And uh, I think Kurt's right that there are some, there are some red flags there. Um, Judge Bork, in an interview in, in Newsweek this week, uh, talked about Judge Sotomayor's reputation for bullying counsel, which is not something that is a hallmark of good judicial temperament. Uh, in addition, Kurt talked about um, uh, you know, possible ethical issues that should be uh, explored by the Senate Judiciary Committee. Uh, he talked about the, uh, uh, the use of procurement opinions. Uh, I would add to that, Kurt, that in the um, initial ruling in the New Haven Firefighters case, the panel was not even going to issue a procurium opinion. It was going to dispose of the case, as I understand it, by summary order. I think that the uh, rules, the judicial rules, on what kind of case is appropriate for, uh, for handling by a summary disposition were clearly not met in this case. And it would be very interesting to ask Judge Sotomayor how it is that nonetheless uh, this panel got together and decided that they were going to try to bury the case this way. A uh, case that clearly was significant. And this is a case that prompted a uh, sua sponte, you know, on its own, en banc review by the Second Circuit, and then uh, the interest of the Supreme Court, which granted cert, uh, granted full review in the case, something that it does in only a tiny percentage of cases. How could this panel have thought that this was a case that should be buried with no published opinion at all? I think that that raises very important um, you know, ethical questions. 